So we are staring at what really could be called as an extended sell-off. An extended sell-off is being led by the obvious pocket, which is US tech and then commodities. Now this extended sell-off for the first time we've seen post-COVID is A, it has, it has lasted for a couple of days because post-COVID we've not seen, excepting that U patch of Ukraine crisis, we've not really seen an extended sell-off. Now why are we staring at this extended sell-off? This could be profit booking, global growth concerns are there. And the fact that commodity prices are tumbling down at a time when dollar index is also down is a clear indication that now markets are getting worried about how the demand indicators essentially would move going forward. So you are, I wouldn't say it's a sell-off, I won't use the word reversal yet, but the fact that the sell-off has extended itself, it has hit other asset classes, it also is not seeing any follow-up buying. That in a sense is a clear indication that for the moment it appears that a lot of, lot of uh, you know, strength in the global market now is missing and there is very little fall of buying which in a sense is there at least uh, in global financial markets. Yeah, and the global financial markets are not looking good at all right now. If you look at the Japanese market, that too has seen quite a bit of slide this morning because the GDP figure in Japan came in much lower than expectations. So there was a drag down of over 3% as far as the Japanese market is concerned. But as we talked about, it's the commodities as well, which have seen a bit of a sell-off, not just the equity markets. In fact, month to date, which is, which is just a matter of 8 to 9 trading sessions right now, aluminum is already down 4%. Natural gas has seen a bit of a reaction as well crude oil that has been the biggest um, you know uh, biggest mover in the last couple of weeks so the crude oil on the WTI basis is down almost 7%. Copper, zinc, they too are facing quite a bit of drag at this point of time. In fact, dollar index has inched to a level of 101 as well. Dikunj, what's your take on the kind of commodity sell-off that we are seeing and how we should read it in context of India? See, why do commodities fall? Commodities fall only when there is demand concern, right? Uh, or commodities, they fall if there is an interplay between the dollar index. The dollar index is on your side and yet commodities have fallen. And as of now, there is not early evidence, but there is very little, not very solid evidence to indicate that we are in for a big slowdown in the second half of this year. So for the moment, it appears that demand concerns and deleveraging in the commodity market and the fact that this time the classic weak dollar long commodity trade has not played out, I think it's creating what could be called as a financial uh, that could that is really causing a ripple effect because so far we've not got any data which indicates that there is going to be a huge demand drop in the second half of this year if at all the Fed rate cut is just going to induce more demand. Second, there is nothing in the geopolitical environment in terms of supply and demand dynamics which would suggest that why oil should be down. So for the moment I think this is purely a, a sequence of event where the dollar where the weak dollar long commodity trade has not played out and typically the world had prepared for this trade that dollar will go down, Fed will cut rates and commodities will go higher but post Fed that Fed trade has not played out and that is leading to some kind of reversal. For the moment it does not appear that there is, there is a niggling worry but there is no fear of a slowdown. If the economic data worsens going forward, we'll talk about it. For the, for the moment, I think I would call the reversal and commodities less fundamental and more technical in nature. Let me put it this way. All right, that's the view coming in when it comes to commodities. So a lot of talking points, really. But the question is, now that we're faced with what we have, the month of September getting off to a fairly shaky start, particularly when it comes to the global markets across the board, what should be the big strategy or what should be the uh, strategy that one adopts? And uh, Nikunj, to begin with, do you think that there are signs of any sort of a global reversal and how important would that be? And where does India stand among it all? Are we going to outperform? See, there is a reason to believe that India will outperform. And the reason to believe is largely because of, you know, a decline in commodity prices always has led to India's outperformance in historical, if I look at historical correlations. Decline in commodity prices is always good news for inflation. And this time, because you also have a good monsoon, you may imagine that a combination of demand coming back because of monsoon and demand coming 
back because of recovery in rural India, I think is something which will be better than last two years. C, you do have a factor of low commodity prices which will have an impact on inflation and inflation I think is the biggest talking point. We know that Reserve Bank of India has been tightening the liquidity uh, you know, news, so to speak, and that surely will have impact on the way commodity prices would move in the near term. Uh, or how inflation would move in the near term and what RBI will do in terms of liquidity. So you put all those factors together, you can actually make a case for India to outperform. But what should be the playbook for next couple of days? You definitely should avoid IT and commodities. Global facing sectors, I don't think you should really buy them in this fall. Second, which is a very internal sector, and this is something which I think everybody has started debating. We were talking about it three weeks ago, now everybody is debating, which is that has the PSU trade picked out. Whether it's defense, railways, or combination of you know some other banks, has the PSU trade really peaked out? See what would be the outperforming sector. I think the outperforming sector now really would be consumer staples, largely rural-facing economy, and companies which essentially would benefit if interest rates come out or liquidity increases, which is NBFCs. So avoid IT, PSU question mark there in terms of trade. Consumer staples and NBFCs, I think, could become the port of call for next few days. Okay, so that strategy is clear. The PSU trade might have peaked out. Not the best time to be in IT and metals as well because global-facing segments might face headwinds. In fact, since we're